What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert. And in this video, I wanted to have a look at the pass through mode on mix engine effects. Okay, so the easiest way to explain this and how mix engine effects work with the pass through mode engaged is simply visually. Now the important thing to understand about the mix engine effects platform is that they have the ability with one plugin to process all of the individual channels of your source tracks and also on the summing side at the bus level, which would be in this case on my main outs, there's also some processing coming inbound to there as well. So there's kind of a dual processing that's happening. The source channels are being processed by the plugin in addition to the summing of the bus. Okay, now like I mentioned, the easiest way to describe this is by using colors. So you'll see here, I've got a mix set up. This is the same session that I used for my CTC1 review video. It's just a set of drum tracks, which is a really good example to show how pass-through works. So for example, you can see all of my source tracks over here are in blue. I have all these different source tracks. Now, any buses that I've set up over here are in yellow, and this is subgroups. So typically what I do is if I have, for example, a kick channel, I'll send those both out to a bus and treat those together. Do a little bit of pre-mixing with the source channels, and then I'll treat the bus. Now the same thing happening for the snare. We've got a bit of a snare reverb over here. And then we have a bus for our toms over here. And then we have the rest of these tracks, which are room tracks and various different microphones. They are going to a drum bus. And this is our main drum bus over here. So as you can see right now, I've got a main channel over here and I've colored this in pink. Now technically you could do this any bright color that you want, as long as it's something that you can see. But for my example, I'm just gonna use pink because it's a nice contrast. Now, if you look really closely, you'll notice that there's this little pink dot over here. Now this is an indication of a track or a bus that's being affected by a mix engine effect. So for example, you can see here, I have two pink dots in this session. In fact, this is showing me that I've done something wrong. I want this to be routed to the drum bus. So you can see that just disappeared over here. What this means is that when you work with the mix engine effects platform, you have to think of it in terms of a top down workflow, meaning that you have a plugin on your master bus and it filters down or it trickles down to your source tracks. Now, depending on the pass through setting will give you a different behavior. So for example, right now, pass through is set to off. Now it's worth mentioning that the default state of the CTC one is with pass through engage. And that's the way that I always use it. But I just wanted to have it set up with pass through disengaged, just so you can see the difference the minute I engage it. I want you to keep your eye on all of these blue tracks over here in this little top section. Keep your eye on it the minute I click the pass through button. Now you can see that I'm gonna to toggle it off and back on again, off again and back on again. So what you see is that when I have pass through engaged, it allows the audio to pass through all of these buses over here and be affected by the CTC one. So just to keep this simple, let's go through this one more time. So with pass through engaged, all of your source tracks are now being processed by this instance of the CTC one. Now let's say I wanted to complicate things a little bit. Let's say that I wanted all of my source tracks to be processed by the CTC one, but then let's say I wanted something different for example, for my kick tracks, or let's just use the snare tracks. So on the snare bus, I'm going to go up and I'm going to bring in the CTC one. Now this is going to be a different instance of the CTC one. Now I'm going to change this to let's go for the custom. I love the custom. So now what you can see here, if you look closely, is these two source tracks now have this yellow color. Now, just to kind of bring this even further, I've changed this to green, now they have a green color. Let's change it to something like purple. Now they have a purple color. So these little color, these little dots give you an indication of what's happening with your routing and what's being processed by the mix engine effects when pass through is engaged. Now it's worth noting that on this bus channel, let's go ahead, let's just change this back to, let's change it to green for now. If you look closely over here, you'll see two colors, actually you'll see three, but the main ones we're interested in looking at is you'll see that we have this one and we also have this one. So we have the green color here and we have the pink color over here. Now going back to what I said initially, if you think about this in a top-down workflow, 
If you look at a bus that has a mix engine effect on it, so in this case, my main fader, my master fader over here, has a CTC1 that's set in tube mode over here, you'll notice that on the left side of this top tab, which is just above the mute button, you can see that we have this pink color icon. So this is indicating that the summing part of the mix engine effect, where it's summing all of the source channels into the main mix, is being processed by mix engine effects. Now, if you look at all the source tracks, the right side has this little pink icon in it, this little indicator over here, which is indicating that these are outbound and they're on their way and they've already been processed by the mix engine effects. Now, the interesting thing here is with pass through on is how it interacts when you have additional buses. So for example, we already defined the rule that we know that if we have pass through engaged, that we can essentially have one mix engine effects plugin that's able to affect our entire session. So all of the source tracks of this entire session, they're being affected by the CTC one. You can go ahead and bypass this, listen for the difference. You can tell right away the difference. Okay, so that's the first clue. Now, what happens if you want to affect different buses differently? Well, let's take the snare for that same example again, and let's load another instance of CTC1 up here. Let's go to our custom again. Now we can see we have a different order. So we can see over here that these two source tracks, they now have a different color in the top right, which is indicating that they're being affected by a different CTC1 console shaper plugin. Now, the interesting thing is these source tracks are being affected and the summing of this particular bus is being affected by this CTC one. But because this is routed further along the line in terms of our session, then this source track of the CTC one, after it has the summing from this custom algorithm, then this is going outbound. This bus channel is being affected by this CTC one. I know it's kind of complicated, but just to try to simplify it even further, as a general rule of thumb, try to work with pass-through mode engaged because that allows you to start off a mix and you can be using the CTC1 or whatever mix engine effect you're using. You can dial in your sound, but then if you decide later on down the line, you know what, I need to do some submixing, I want to take some acoustic guitars, bust them out to a new bus, you can do that without affecting your mix. Now then if you decide a little bit later on down the line that you wanted to switch up or you want to have different sets of tracks be affected by different mix engine effects, then you can go ahead and do that. But the easiest way to understand this, and I know I've said this, I've repeated it already, but I'll say it again. The easiest way to understand this is simply to give your buses a different color. And then you can visually see how things are being affected. So this one has a yellow color right now. This one has a green Let's go over here. Let's give this one a purple and let's leave this one alone. And this in fact has nothing on it at all. So it's allowing the signal to pass through this bus entirely. So if I was to go in now and add different CTC one console shapers for these different buses over here, go ahead and add this one as well. We'll use custom for this, or in fact, let's use tube. doesn't really matter. The idea here is that now we are able to see the color coding in terms of the source channels and we have an idea of how things are being affected. So for example, these two source tracks, they have a yellow color. They're being affected by the console shaper, the CTC one that's on this bus. Now these CTC ones are in pass through mode as well. Then the outbound side of this bus channel is then being affected. It's routed to the drum bus the drum bus is routed to the mains, but there's nothing on the drum bus. So then the bus channels over here are still being affected. Their output is still being affected by this CTC one because pass through is engaged. Now, again, watch what happens when I take the pass through mode and I disengage it. Keep an eye on these, keep an eye on these ones, particularly these two and all of these over here, the colors are going to change. Now this is indicating that some of these are not being processed by the console shaper. This bus channel 
is being processed, its output is being processed, and it's going into this CTC1, but the source tracks are not being processed. So we'll engage pass through again, and now you can see the colors. So like I said, the easiest way, this is a bit of a complicated session, but the easiest way to understand this is simply to create some simple sessions. You don't even have to pass audio through unless you wanna hear the results and you wanna push things dramatically just so you can hear the results. But you can set up a basic session with some source tracks, set up some different buses, start off with an instance of something like console shaper with pass through engaged, or you could use the basic console shaper over here like this one over here. It's gonna be the same thing, it has pass through, it's gonna be on or off. This will allow you to see the way that the tracks are being affected and this will help you understand the pass through mode in better detail. This is really the only way that I was able to understand it is once I noticed that the color of the bus channel that has a mix engine effect will give this little indicator above the mute button on all of the source tracks and bus channels that are being affected. And like I said, it's a top-down method, so you always have to think of it in a top-down workflow in terms of what you do on your main bus trickles down and affects all of the buses. But then if we interrupt those buses or we interrupt that signal flow midway, then we can alter or adjust the source tracks to be affected by different instances of mix engine effects. But keep in mind, the mix engine effects are multi-level, they're very detailed. They affect source tracks, and they also affect the summing when they come into the bus. So anyways, I hope that's helped demystify things a little bit, and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.